In this video, we're going to see how to create private user directories in Firebase Storage. In other words, a directory where only a single user has the ability to read and or write from the directory. There are a few prerequisites that we will need, and these have been covered in previous videos. First of all, we need to set up Firebase Authentication, and we need to set up Firebase Storage. And then we need some kind of application that's going to access these. In our case, it's an Android application. It could also be an iOS or a web application. Now the steps to create this, we need to access the Firebase user object on our application. And this was provided when we created our Firebase authentication system. And then we need to save our assets, our images, or whatever we're saving the storage, into a path that includes the unique identifier of our logged in Firebase user. That's on the application side. On the cloud side, we need to edit the rules to make sure that that path name matches the request.auth.uid. In other words, when we save something to our Firebase storage, a request object goes up and there's something called request.auth.uid, which contains the unique identifier of the user making this request. We can compare that to the path that contains the same user identifier variable and make sure that the two match. Now we can use a little parameter magic to pull that path name out of the path. And then we can put together a rule like so where we say allow write if request auth UID equals the user ID that we obtained from the path. So without further ado, let's get started. If we take a look at our existing save specimen to Firebase method, down here on line 378 and 379, we are saving an image to our Firebase cloud storage. And you see right now we're saving it just in the images directory. Let's add to that one more thing. I have user dot get UID and then plus and then we'll put in a slash again and then plus URI dot get last path segment. So uh, one more concatenation operator we have here. So we'll save it under the images directory and then user is a Firebase user variable that we populated when the user logged in. So user.getUID will give us access to that unique identifier for the user. Just for out of curiosity here, if I type in user, you see we can get several other pieces of information about the user. The email, the display name, several other things, metadata, phone number, photo URL, so on and so forth. So several things that we can get from the user, but our interest here is in that unique identifier. So that takes care of things from the client side. Let's take a quick before and after look at the images directory that we have now on Firebase Storage. So you see images, as I have it before doing this demonstration, it simply has all of the images saved right under this images directory. What we're hoping to see after I run this demo is we're hoping to see subdirectories here that match our user identifier, the unique identifier for the user. And under that will be each of the user's specific images or assets that the user is saving to Firebase Storage. I've started the application now and I've pre-populated it with a few details. I'll go ahead and take a picture now. We'll take a picture of the door. And the debugger stops to tell us that we're hearing back from the camera. And we'll just confirm that we see that. Now we'll go back and we'll hit the Save button. First thing it's going to do is it's going to see if I have the Firebase user object, which indicates whether or not I'm logged in. The user object is null, so it means I'm not logged in. So I step down here, it's going to create the login screen for me, and I'll choose F9. And we'll see in just a moment, it's going to render the login screen for me. I'll go ahead and say sign in with Google in this case. It prompts me for my email address. And now my password. A few other buttons I have to click through if this is my first time logging on. And now the login is complete, it takes me back to my application. And note that we're on the on activity result, similar to what we saw for the camera, except this time we're going to get our author authorization result. Note that it's populating this user object with the logged in user. So I click and we see a few pieces of information here, nothing terribly useful at this point, but at least we have a populated user and this will allow us to uh, continue and save our specimen to Firebase. So we populate the DTO that we created and now we walk down and we're going to upload that image up to Firebase Storage. 
and I'll choose F9 to let that continue. We save our DTO, and it looks like we're successful because on the image itself, we're hearing back on the add-on success listener. Uh, so it looks like things are looking pretty good. As a matter of fact, the next thing that we should see is a URI that represents this image. Let's take a look at what this URI contains. And we can confirm on the Firebase console that we click into images. And now we should see a directory with some kind of unique identifier that represents my login. And sure enough, here's that unique identifier. So I click, and here's an image. And sure enough, that's the image of the door. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to add security rules or enhance the security rules to ensure that only I, when I'm logged in with that Gmail account, can add to or read from this directory. Let's take a look at that now. So our rules start now with service and then Firebase storage, which just says, which of the Firebase services are we setting these rules for? Now we have match B bucket zero. Let's leave that as it is. It's the allow read write part that we want to change. And I also want to change the match up here. All paths equals wildcard wildcard means starting from root, all paths below here, no matter how many, how deep the nesting is, if it's one directory, if it's two directories, whatever the file names are, so on and so forth. We need to be a little bit more specific here. We're saying that we're going to match on that images root directory. Now remember, after the images root directory, we have a directory that represents the user ID. And that user ID is going to differ by user. So we essentially have to make a variable for this. And we make a variable by doing curly, and then we'll just call it user ID, like so, and then close curly, and then slash. And that makes it really easy to be able to pull out a path segment and treat it as a variable. So now let's go down to our rules. We see right now it says if request auth is not equal null, that's a very basic rule that means we just have to have a logged in user, but we're not specifying what type of user it is. So let's enhance this. Let's say if request.auth.uid, which repre represents that user, user's ID, equal, equal, and then let's use the path variable up here without the curlies. If user ID equal, equal, and then user ID, just like so. So you see that by naming this directory after the user ID, uh, we're able to compare that directory name or that path name to the unique identifier for that user ID, which is the same thing in other words, from the request object that gets passed up when we are saving an image. So let's choose publish, and then we'll go back to files. And we know that we're going to have images here, and then under images, we're going to have this user ID here. That's essentially our user ID. With these rules in place, let's try to save a new image. I'll navigate back to my application, We'll try a different plant this time. So we'll say Linton Rose at Cherry Grove, and we'll take a photo one more time. This time we'll take a picture of the TV. And once again, choose Save. Now I've already logged in, so when I choose Save, we'll see that we do have a valid user this time. So it's going to skip over the login and go straight to our save specimen to Firebase. And now we see that the breakpoint has hit in the on success callback, which is good news that indicates that our file has stored properly. And once again, here we're getting the image URL. So with that, let's run back and take a look at our image in the Firebase console and just confirm that it's there. I choose files, images, and my directory one more time. And voila, I see a second image. Let's click and we should see, sure enough, the TV is there. So you see now I've made a private directory. Now what happens when we try to save with a different account? I paused the video for a moment and I removed my Google account from this device so that I can try to log in one more time. So I've chosen this time a Fragrant Honeysuckle 1313 Vine Street. And we'll go ahead and take a photo. This time we'll look out the window. And we get our call back confirming that the photo has saved. And now I'm going to choose the save button and it's going to prompt me to log in one more time. If we look at the debugger, we should see our user is null. And again, to get the user to be null, I had to go to settings on the phone and then accounts and then choose my Google account and remove it. 
One trick is if I don't do that, it will keep me logged in even if I close and reopen this device, which normally is great. Normally that's the desire, desired behavior. But in this case, I want to show what happens if we have a different account. So I'm going to go ahead and choose F8, and we see that once again, it's going to prompt me to log in. I'll choose F9 here, bring the emulator back over, and in just a moment, it will show the login screen. One thing I really like about Firebase Authentication, by the way, is notice that the login screen maintains my theme colors throughout the application. So it looks very uniform, even though this login is being produced by us, uh, for us by Firebase Authentication. So I put in an email address here, and this is one that I've previously registered with Firebase Authentication. And now it's going to prompt me for a password. And the password's successful, so it takes me back to our breakpoint here. Now let's watch as it saves this image. So I choose F8, 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 and it's my authorization request code. Now it's getting a user object, so the user is no longer null. It's now populated with something. Now it's going to save to Firebase just as we saw before. Just to confirm what our current state is within Firebase, remember that we can go up to this images directory. And at this point, there's only one folder with the user ID there because I've only logged in with one account. Our expectation is that after this save completes, there will be a separate folder for this separate user ID that I have, the email authentication that I just did now, which is different from the Google authentication I did just a few moments ago. So let's continue. We choose F8, F8, and I'll choose F9 to speed things up. Storage reference, this is where we have our upload task where we're saving the image, uh, add on success listener, and then we save the DTO to Firebase database, press F9, and take a look, sure enough, on success is fired, which means that it was successfully able to save the image, which is good news. And now we're getting back the URL from that image, and once again, save. Let's go back, take a look at our Firebase database again, or sorry, our Firebase Firestore again. Do a quick refresh here. Aha, take a look. We now have a new folder, different than the folder we had before. So I click on this folder, and we have one image, and if all works well, this should be the image that shows the outdoor space, the window. Aha, sure enough, it is. Now we've confirmed that every logged in user will get his or her own separate directory, but we haven't confirmed that one user cannot write to a different user's directory. This is the directory that I've created with the account that I just logged in with. This is the directory that was created for my Google account. Let me go ahead and copy this and let's just verify that when logged in as my Yahoo email, I'm unable to save to the account that is logged in with, uh, with my Google account. For that, we're going to have to hard code something. Uh, this is just a demo just to confirm that our security rules are indeed working. So I'm going to hard code this, but I'm going to revert it back to what it used to be before I, uh, before I actually upload this video. So here we go. We'll get rid of that user, get user ID and paste. Uh, make sure that the slashes are the same. So once again, that is that unique identifier that was generated for the Google account. And I'm currently logged in with email with a different account. Let's restart and see what happens. The application's restarted and I've pre-populated it with a tulip tree or tulip poplar in Turkey Foot Road in Erlanger. Let's take another photo. This time we'll take a picture of that little picture over the couch. And we've seen this before. I'm going to fast forward through the things that we've already seen. Now we choose save. And remember, I'm going to log in with my, uh, with my Yahoo email account. And I'm trying to save to a directory that's created with a different email account. Uh, so this time user is null. So once again, I'm going to have to log in. Since I've already done this point, I'm going to pause the video and do this off camera. Just speed things up a little bit. The login is processed and let's watch closely what happens here as we try to save this item. So first of all, we find out that we're authorized. We save the specimen to Firebase, create our DTO. Attempt to upload the image, add the failure listener, and I've set a breakpoint there so that we can watch what happens if we are unable to save this specimen. And that's what I'm expecting in this case because I'm trying to save to a directory I do not have access to. So F8, F8, and take a look which breakpoint hits next. Very interesting. We're on the breakpoint in the on failure method. Let's mouse over this E or we can scroll to the right, whichever works best. 
and we see com.google.firebase.storage.storage exception user does not have permission to access this object which is exactly what i anticipated i choose f9 let's go back again and have a look at our images directory this is the directory that corresponds to the user i'm currently logged in as we already had this image there this is one we took a while ago with the view outdoors notice it is not the image that we just took with the picture over the couch I go back to images, and this is the directory we were trying to save to by hard coding. I click into that, and once again, I have the two images that I already had in this, in this directory. Neither of them are the picture above the couch. So sure enough, the rules that we have set up not only authorize us to write to our own directory, but they also prevent us from writing to a different directory. So this is a common mechanism that you'll see read and write where the user ID that's in this path matches the request user ID. You could split this into separate read and separate write. Uh, for example, if you want to be able to post something that you want others to view, but you want to be the only one who's able to post, you might set read to public and write to only your user ID. So that's a look at how to set up private directories and authentication in Firebase Storage. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. This video is part of a playlist on my channel called Create an Android 26 App, and all of the source code is freely available on my GitHub space, Disco Spiff, Plain Places Mobile 26. Thank you.